Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead series. In the last episode, we explored a library which was just fantastic. We found so many books that are going to be uh, very valuable for us in the near future. We also got into a bit of a shootout with the local zombie population. We ended up killing quite a few of them, and I expect we're going to run into something like that again in this episode. And then finally, we started heading towards the other bookstore, and that has led us to where we are now, so we're probably going to have to deal with some zombies in order to get access to even more books. Also worth noting, in the last episode, I had some recording issues, specifically audio problems. Thank you very much, Microsoft. Uh, so I don't blame you if you skipped the last episode, but we're going to jump back into things now. So hello everyone, I'm just now <laughs> recovering from that loss of audio quality in the last episode, I'm not feeling very good about that, I'm actually very very salty uh, about it. Microsoft keeps uninstalling my programs whenever it updates because uh, Microsoft for some reason is under the impression that they get to decide what I install and don't install on my computer, so very infuriating, I actually really hate Microsoft and it leads to this problem quite frequently, uh, I, I just unfortunately I did not catch it. This time it was a stealth update, I guess, uh, and so they removed my my audio program. So we're gonna go back to base, we're gonna eat something, and we're going to take some cough syrup because I keep forgetting to do that. So that's what we're doing now, and then we'll go out there and we'll probably get into a prolonged bit of shooting to clear out the enemy density in that area. <sighs> so we're gonna move on. I, I mean, I don't wanna belabor the point with the whole, um, with the whole audio thing, but it's so frustrating when you realize that you screwed up an episode. Um, back when I was playing, uh, what was, what were we playing? It was, uh, Symphony of the Night. I was playing Symphony of the Night on stream, and no one told me my audio was messed up, which, please, if you ever notice that when someone is streaming, please tell them. They, they will appreciate it, I promise. Um, so I actually had, uh, quite a few episodes in that series that had completely screwed up audio, and that was a real bummer, man. Uh, but at least this time it was only one episode. I'm gonna do what I can in editing. Thankfully, with um, with uh, recording manually instead of do just uh, using the stream footage, I have a lot more control over my audio. So hopefully, I can in editing crank it up really good, and and hopefully it's at least tolerable. So, but anyway, let's move on. Let's not focus on that because that will derail my whole uh, whole episode. Because I could ramble about Microsoft being a terrible company for like 40 minutes. So here again, we're seeing a really lengthy processing time for cooking our meat. We continually are experiencing these issues. It seems to be problems with the new version of the game uh, is just not processing things very quickly and I don't know that there's anything I can do about that so we'll just keep an eye on that and uh, hopefully update in the near future and that should take care of it. You know while we're here we might as well make some tea. I did say we would make some pine needle tea to continue to boost our health stat. I could uh, use the debug menu to look at it again but I think we've use the debug menu a few times in this series and people always get a bit picky about that. They always, oh, you're cheating. And it's like, well, I didn't really do anything. I just was looking at a number. I don't know that that's cheating. It didn't really impact my behavior. I was gonna do things that way anyway, but just to stave off, you know, any comments about, oh, you're a cheater. <laughs> we're just gonna pretend that we, you know, have a decent health stat, but we're gonna work on it anyway. So I should still have a tank mostly full of water. Man, we went through a lot of water. Almost half of our tank already. What was I using that for? We haven't been cooking anything with water. Really? I haven't been crafting anything really with water. I wonder where, where all my water went. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. I don't think we've made tea or anything, so you would think we, we wouldn't have used that much water. You know, I don't think I have any gallon jugs. Why don't we uh, pop out into the nearby houses? We can probably pretty easily find a few gallon jugs. Maybe in the food restaurant they will have some cooking oil in the back, but I, I, if I'm going to take that, I probably should just keep the cooking oil and not dump it out, but we'll have a look back here. Uh, cheese is not going to do it. Can't store my tea in cheese bags. It's probably not the way to do things, so we'll pop across the street to a house here. Anyway, hopefully my audio is better. Hopefully everything is good. And another boarded up house. A lot of boarded up houses. Get that mouse cursor off the screen. Oh, man. You know, and you settle in. You're like, man, I'm going to take care of things today. I'm going to do a good job. And then you realize that you screwed something up. You know, you didn't notice. And, and all of a sudden, now you have an episode that's rendered mostly unusable. Real feels bad moment. Trying to do better with um, just being a good YouTuber in general. 
putting a lot more effort into editing my videos. Uh, you'll notice basically every video now. Regardless of series, I do the intro where I recap and I show footage from the previous episode and I add some transitions and stuff like that. So I've been trying to make an effort. Um, and like I said, I've been working on my tutorial series. Oh, in fact, did I tell you I was working on some art assets for my tutorial series? So currently I'm writing out the, uh, I'm recording the uh, stomach contents where I'm explaining how hunger works in the game. In fact, I'll put it on the screen. So I drew a little diagram of, <laughs> this It looks terrible. I drew a diagram of the stomach on a chalkboard, made it look all chalky. Oh, it looks great. Um, and then I drew a couple chicken legs to represent meat going into your stomach. So yeah, I don't know. Hello internet. So in this video, I was talking about the stomach contents video that I was making. I actually finished editing that section of the video. So here I'm actually gonna play about a minute worth of that clip to show you what I was working on. So it's only about a minute long, but it's the stomach and the chicken legs and stuff I was just talking about. So enjoy this uh, brief reprieve from my actual gameplay and here's the video. So let's say you're playing the game and you notice that your character is very hungry. This shows up in your sidebar. You decide that you're going to eat two pieces of cooked meat. Now when you eat the meat, it gets sent to your stomach. And since this meat takes up space in your stomach, your hunger status, which is based on stomach volume, goes away or maybe it even changes to full, showing that you can't eat any more food. Over time, your stomach will process these contents, freeing up space and consuming the calories of the meat. Now the meat's calories are then added to your internal calorie storage. Uh, this is something that's hidden from the player, you cannot view this in the game. As your calorie stores increase, the character's BMI changes, which then will possibly increase your weight. When your weight gets updated, it may shift to a weight that has a penalty, which is based on how heavy or how underweight you are. And then finally, because your stomach is once again empty after processing the meat, your hunger status updates, which might show again that you could eat more food. Now hopefully that process was easily understood and now we're gonna talk about things in a lot more detail. I don't know if it looks good or not, but I think that having a visual representation for how hunger works and your stomach and, and all that stuff works, I think will benefit people. Let's make some pine needle tea and we're gonna make as much as we can with our pine boughs, which is perfect. We have just enough for a gallon of tea. Oh, and it's gonna take a really long time because Okay, so that's fun. So we'll just sit here for the next probably, I don't know, 50 seconds waiting for this to cook. So something obviously is going on. Hopefully it does not interfere with my recording. Yeah, so I drew that stomach and um, been working things up. So I'm trying to put more of an effort into my videos. In fact, if you watched the map video I made where we talked about the map issues, I spent a lot of time but like, you know, it sounds really straightforward. So for people who don't edit, it sounds really straightforward. Like, yeah, you slap together a few footages you know, different video footages, footage, you put uh, some pans on it, you know, maybe you have some text pop up, oh, what's the big deal? But that like six minute ep episode took me several hours, you know, you record the audio, you record the video, uh, you start editing it, you realize that you need more video than you initially thought you did, so you go back, record more video, you put all the clips together, you gotta line them up with dialogue sometimes, each time you add a pan, you can't just, man you know, you have to manually set it every time because if you're using like a pre set up pan, each image is slightly different. And with my map screen, I had that big black bar, so I had to edit that out. So I couldn't use my pre built pans. I had to manually pan every video image uh, and stuff like that and put text on the screen and highlight, you know, put boxes around stuff. And by the time you're done, it's like, man, that was four hours of my life to make a like seven minute video. I don't know how real YouTubers do it. You know, obviously I'm a baby YouTuber. I don't have much of a, I'm not very good at these things. I'm very new to this stuff. Even though I've been doing it a couple years, the, the editing process is new to me. I don't usually do a, a ton of editing. So I don't know how someone like, uh, I mean, I, you know, I don't like the Paul brothers. I actually think they're terrible representatives of the YouTube creator community. But like, uh, I was watching, was it Devin Nash and they showed clips of like um not jake paul who's the other one logan paul's videos and i was like man i hate this guy i hate logan paul but his video looked great and he ta was talking in the video about how logan paul is like super into editing and he takes a lot of time to put everything together and i was like man i don't know how these people do it where they make these longer videos and they uh 
do tons of editing. I mean, I guess he probably has an editor that does the bulk of the work. And he's just like, oh yeah, you, I want this, I want that. I want it to look like this, you know? And because they've done editing, they can say like, okay, well, I want this ty type of cut. I want this type of, you know, whatever. But then someone else does the brunt of the work would be my guess how that works. But anyway, most people probably don't care about this. Let's uh, reload our magazines. Anyway, point is, <laughs> we've been working on the tutorial series. It's very slow going, but soon TM, maybe, you know, in the next like month or two, we'll start, uh, you know, releasing those videos. They're going to be just the time investment means it's going to take a long time to get through the series. But I look at my Let's Play tutorial and I'm not happy with it. And I keep getting people, even today, I got a comment. Someone was like, hey, you know, I just churned through like your first 20 tutorial videos. Thanks a lot. They really helped me out. And I'm glad people like them and that they're helpful, but I I can do better, you know? So that's what my, my life is right now, trying to do better. And that's the story of my life in general, even in my personal life. That's basically my, my goal. My goal is not to be perfect. My goal is not to be, you know, the pinnacle of human achievement. It's just to be better than I am today. So yeah, which I think is a healthy way to look at it. Be the best you you can right now. So, okay. So, we want to kill these guys so we can get access to this bookstore. But, spoiler alert, shooting them is going to draw all the enemies in the area. So you can see, even just on this road here, even though there's nothing in the area that is particularly monster heavy, uh, although electronic shops can have a lot of zappers and shockers in them, um, despite the fact that it's just houses and stuff in the area, we can clearly see that there's like 15 enemies right here alone, so we're going to end up seeing quite a few Okay, maybe not 15, maybe 10, but still. Uh, it's going to draw a lot of enemies, so we're going to fall back. And we definitely don't want the boomer thing. What are they called? The um, the ones that with the gas. We definitely don't want you getting in range of us. The rest of you, not a huge concern. Uh, we have plenty of bullets, of course, so we're not really worried about this. Although the constant pop-ups about how we see enemies is going to get pretty annoying. I think you'll bleed out start popping off rounds I think you'll bleed out man that's a whole lot of zombies right here um, two of you are gonna bleed out I'm a little concerned about how many there are but it's dark so they can't see us so I'm gonna pull north and we'll start shooting from here and they are gonna come this way because again we're shooting uh, we're gonna let that pupating zombie live. Oh, hello, I didn't see you there, hazmat zombie. Yeah, my goodness, quite a lot of enemies here for no obvious reason. I wish I knew where you came from or why you're here. It is the zombie apocalypse, and I am always saying that I would prefer to see more enemies on the road than in houses and in locations like that, but... Uh, or rather, in instead of in parks and stuff, I would rather they show up in the street like this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let that pupating zombie kind of follow me over here. And then I'm going to use it as um, kind of a blockade to slow them down. And then we're just gonna start picking off some of them. And the pupating zombies, I, based on what I'm seeing, I think their speed should be reduced a little bit because they're clearly very slow moving. Like they're, they're, they're like slug-like and they're in a pupa. So you would think they would be very slow, but it's actually about our speed. Seems like every step we take or so, and maybe every other step it gets to move. And I would like to see that reduced more significantly to something like the crawler zombie where they can't really move at all. Cause look how fast this thing is. Way too fast for a creature that's supposed to be like in a pupa. But I think we should kill you now. Okay, or I mean, I really would, I would like you to die, please die. Okay, well, we're missing these 50% shots, so that's super exciting. And really, all we have to worry about is as long as nothing shows up to our north. Okay, why are you auto-targeting way out of our way? Shoot the ones that are closer to us, please. Uh, as long as nothing shows up to our north and cuts off our retreat, we should be perfectly fine. Flying projectile destroys the 223 casing. What projectile? My bullet? Did I shoot a casing? That's quite a shot. <sighs> just clear them out ignore I don't I don't I don't understand where you're all coming from why there are so many of you 
but I'm not, again, I'm not super concerned about our safety or anything like that. It's just uh, the tedium of clearing out the area. I really did not expect, when we had seen four or five on the road, I really did not expect to see like 35 enemies come out of the woodwork. So I'm not sure why that happened, where they all came from, what building is spawning them, but it's obviously a problem. I mean, even now we have, you know, like 10 enemies on screen and that's after we've killed probably two dozen. So not super fun. We're gonna do a lot of pulping, a lot of pulping. This was a lot easier given that it's nighttime, so that has helped us out as well. We've gone through two full magazines. We can ignore that, I believe. And I'd like to kill that one first because they are quite fast. At this point, we've worked our way through the sludge trail. I think we move south. Yeah, I think we move south because it will draw them over this sludge trail, which will slow many of them down. And we can use this one as a barricade as well. Uh, although we have to walk through the bush to do so, which will slow us down as well. We'll just start plinking shots. And again, we can fall back to the south as necessary and get on the other side of this sludge trail, which will slow them down considerably. I did, oh good, and just many more enemies are coming. I really, I don't like when there are tons of enemies for no good reason. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't see anything in this area that would hint at there being 50 or 60 zombies here. Okay. But we're going to start shooting. This will draw them to the south. We can, again, use this sludge trail. I did uh, recently in a video, I think I named it like, use the slime. And what I meant was to use the sludge trail to our advantage. But then I, I accidentally wrote slime and I realized later, like, well, no, slimes are a real thing in Cataclysm. So, like... You saying use the slime, people are going to think there's slime in the episode and it'd be like clickbaity or whatever. So I went back and changed it to sludge. Okay, well, let's uh, have a look here and let's look for corpse. And just have, let's just marvel at the number of corpses we have. So, I mean, there's like 20 right there. It's probably about 30 to 35 ish enemies here. So many, so many corpses to be pulped. Okay, so many bullets. <laughs> and and really, I don't know that it was even worth the, the time and bullet investment that we made, but let's go back to the spear. We can of course swap to the M4 as necessary. Do still see a huge boomer, but it doesn't seem to have been very interested in all the bullets we shot. Hazmat Corpse, uh, unfortunately, does not have a hazmat suit on it, which, uh, of course, does not make sense. We'll pulp you. And, uh, yeah, just sifting through these corpses. I don't even know a, a good way to do this. If we look for... What if I look for... Dot? Will that show ammunition? 223 casings? Okay, so... No ammunition that starts with a dot. Uh, I don't know how you would look for... I mean, maybe shell? No, because because each bullet, it doesn't have like round on it or anything like it doesn't say like two, two, three round or anything like that. So I don't know how you would look for ammo. Uh, I mean, we could just look for like the common ones, like maybe like nine. Maybe there's nine mil. OK, a Beretta's up there. Uh, maybe we can look for Remington. No, I don't know how to do this. I guess we sift through corpse one by one which is absolutely horrible, but I guess <laughs> I, I don't know any way to do that easily. I guess we could use these sorting zones. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is how min-maxers do things. So what we'll do, we'll make a zone. We'll call it ammo. Okay, we'll make a zone and we'll call it, we'll make it a gun zone because we like guns. And we'll make a, I don't know magazines I don't think we need magazines we'll make like a book zone maybe they have a couple books on them none of them would have CBMs none of them I don't care about chemicals none of them would have bionics mmm I don't care about clothing or anything just the guns and stuff maybe maybe weapons we should make one sure and then we'll make a tools pile as well just on the off chance someone has like something cool on them and then what you do, you add an unsorted zone. 
Okay. And then you encompass everything in the unsorted zone. And this is kind of dangerous because we're in a spot where like, we don't know that there are no enemies. And then we sort everything. Pupating crawler. Yes. So that's a second pupating zombie. And I think it's smarter to use our gun on the off chance, if we get close to it, it might explode and create those. Uh... See, so why is this one practically immobile when the other one was quite fast? Are there more than one pupating zombie? Maybe that's what, maybe I'm just an idiot. Wait a minute. Let's look at the other pupating. Just a standard pupating zombie. Okay, I want to look at your description. Let me, let me spawn monster yes i'm not gonna spawn anything pupating pupating oh there's quite a few of them human corpse is wrapped in sticky black fibers that cover everything from the neck down beneath the wrapping there is oh why is your description oh it doesn't show the full description but i want to see the description that's the whole point i opened it, of me opening this Okay, so what I think is happening is that there's a pupating zombie that is like, they're just sort of webbed up, they're not really fully pupating yet. Which is probably the one that was pretty fast, and then here we have a pupating crawler, which is actually like a zombie crawling because it's so covered in this stuff. Half of a human corpse is wrapped in sticky black fibers that cover everything neck down. Beneath the wrapping there is strange rhythmic movement grotesque to behold. And I'm guessing... It's probably like stages, like the early pupators are the fast ones that aren't fully pupating. And then this one is like the one that's super pupating and it probably is the one that explodes into those flesh raptors. So we want to kill this one. That's interesting. I didn't know there were more than one. Okay, you need to die though. I need you to die. Let's wait a few turns, make sure nothing else comes out of the woodwork. Okay, and then go back to sorting. No, do not step in the sludge trail. Oh, is that going to prevent me from sorting? No, do not step into the acid streak. Oh, so this is going to ruin my ability to sort things. Also, it sounds like something is in the laundromat. Hello, child zombie. Oh, my gun is empty. Of course it is. Let's fall back. Um, so this is not going great. It's uh, a little on the tedious side. I just want to sort through the goodies here pop in see if there's anything else oh definitely stop sprinting that's very bad okay where is the acidic zombie spitter zombie i did not even notice you while we were fighting that also would have been very bad because it could have spit at us and, and gotten us into a lot of trouble so i want to dismember you immediately you lop the limbs off the bruised corpse of a spitter zombie well that's horrifying so let's look around for spitter Okay, no other spitter corpse. Um, let's look for acidic. Oh no, this is item? Yeah, 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 that would be right. Okay, so it doesn't look like any other. So let's try this again. No, do not step. <sighs> let's just let's just go, let's just go loot. Uh, we'll come back to this. I, I don't wanna stand around anymore. I wanna actually do something. So we're just gonna go loot this library or what have you. And at this point, it should be pretty clear in the area. Zombie necromancer. <sighs> okay. Well, I definitely need to kill you. Pulp you. All right, let's see if we can get into this bookstore here. Of course, there's sludge trail all the way across it, so that doesn't look very viable. We'll have to go in through the door to the south. Zombie runner, you clearly know where I am, so I guess we'll take you out as well. We've pushed up further, so there could be more zombies that come out of the woodwork here as we start shooting. Man, like I love Cataclysm. Like obviously we talk about this all the time and, and I obviously I like the game because I play it, you know, a lot. I basically based my entire YouTube channel around it. But there are times when it just becomes so tedious to do certain things. It just really saps the fun out of me. And one of those things is like, I have a gun. I have plenty of bullets. We're not in danger, right? Because we have good armor. You know, I've played a lot, so I kind of know when to retreat and how to approach certain situations, things like that. Um, so obviously I'm not in a huge amount of danger in this situation, 
and it just kind of becomes very tedious to just kill all these enemies and there's no way around it like what you know how do you change that you don't like it's a zombie apocalypse there's going to be you know tons of zombies obviously um what in god's name are you thorny shambler okay you're not really a concern i am going to let you approach me though before i start shooting here to try and save myself from drawing any more enemies like obviously there's no way around it right like how do you get through a zombie apocalypse without killing hundreds and hundreds of enemies you don't the whole world is dead this is exactly what would happen right it just gets it just gets old after a while to do the same you know like it, it, to see 40 or 50 enemies just in one little intersection in a town it just gets real old so we're gonna let you approach us if you can find your way around this building here gonna back off i'm surprised to see so many decayed zombies by the way we've seen quite a few usually they are upgraded into the what are they called dissoluted devourers by now if i smash this window does the sludge go away it does not so we can't actually get into this building due to these sludge trails oh here we can okay 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 oh and they smashed up the place pretty good but let's have a look around here nope Pitching a tent, sure. It's, uh, I think, a base level survival book, which we, I don't think, have. We do have a lot of tailoring books that we've picked up over the time here, and that is something I did say we should try to raise our tailoring so we would be able to repair our armors as we find them. Captain Gosgold and the Sea Rovers of Buzzards Bay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't, don't know what that is. So let's have a look at the exterior here where they've smashed everything. Top Gear magazine is not going to do it. Are you a fan of Top Gear internet? I know a lot of people really like Top Gear. Uh, I've never been a fan. Like the TV show, I mean. Obviously, this is supposed to be like a... I don't think Top Gear magazine exists IRL. I think it's just a kind of abstraction book that somebody made for the purposes of adding like a Mechanics 1 magazine or something like that. But like I was never, never into car shows, you know? When I was a teen, we would watch um, races... But like where I live, everyone likes NASCAR, which I hate NASCAR. I think it's terrible. It's real boring. Uh, nothing eventful ever really happens. And when things do, that are eventful do happen, it's usually because someone is in great peril, like someone's in a really horrible accident. So either you watch and it's boring or you watch and it's horrifying because someone is getting severely hurt or possibly killed. So I don't really understand the obsession with NASCAR, um, but when I was a teenager, we would watch like actual races, like um, like kind of like Forza style races, where you know it would be. It was never in America. It was always like some European country, and it was like all oh, people with Corvettes and all these different car types. That you know, obviously NASCAR has very strict rules on what vehicles must look like, and and um, like their their technical limitations. They have to be within a very narrow scope. There's very little change uh, between different cars and NASCAR. They're very, very, very similar. So, like, we really liked the races where it was, like, lots of different car brands, lots of different types of driving, and, like, different, like, we, there, like, when I was a kid, we would play these racing games, and they would have stuff like drift races, and I remember thinking, like, oh, they made that up for video games, like, because it's a cool thing to drift and whatever, but those things actually exist. And so we would watch people like doing these drift races and it was just super awesome. Uh, and I have no idea what, if it was like a league, I don't know what the organization was called, but we used to watch it on my friend. My friend had satellite TV, which came with like a bajillion channels. Um, and they had really obscure like ESPN channels and stuff. And uh, yeah, we would watch these pretty cool races. So we only came out with two books from that particular uh, bookstore. Really not impressive at all. Really quite terrible but whatever uh and obviously we we went through a lot a lot of trouble to get those two books and it was not worth it at all let's um let's eat and drink while we're here because again trying to work in more calories so let's make some more cooked meat how are we doing meat wise let's check our freezer uh chunk of meat we have about 120 five i think based on my quick math which is always is often wrong we go cooked meat here 
And we'll drink some tea as well. Man, this this long crafting is is pretty terrible. I don't know. Are you into racing, internet? I know a lot of people seem to love Top Gear. I, I, is that show even still a thing? Like I, I don't I don't know. I don't follow it. But I was never a car guy. That was really the only racing I ever watched. It was when I was a teenager. We would watch that stuff. And back then too, we would play racing games. We'd play like Need for Speed, and we'd be like, "Oh man, look how cool these cars are." And then you look back in hindsight, like Need for Speed Underground, and you look at that game and you're like, wow, this is not realistic physics at all. This, these cars don't even look good. Like, what was I thinking? I don't know. And then Forza, of course, spoiled me for racing games because that's like one, it's like Gran Turismo levels of like accurate car representation and Forza, they have really powerful like engine sounds. They, my favorite thing about the Forza games is that they all started adding cockpit cockpits so you would go and you could drive inside the car and actually see the car's interior and stuff like that and really really enjoyed that my pine needle tea is probably down here so we're gonna look for pine needle tea we're gonna have a few swigs of that again to boost our health stat if we were really really min maxing we would uh, also be eating healthy food instead of just meat but i think the calories are more important than the health stat boost at the moment and we should reload our magazines because who knows there could be another 50 enemies right around the corner so let's reload our mags and even reload the one in our gun so we can reload that magazine as well reload can't reload a pair of gloves whoops <laughs> my bad and we'll head back out and uh, yeah we'll use this sorting zone trick to pull anything of value out of that area we probably have to wait for the sludge crawlers and everything to dissipate. I do see a zombie snapper up there. I'm not sure how I missed you when I was pulping and killing everything. We must have forgotten a corpse somewhere for it to revive because we obviously would have killed a snapper if we had seen one. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Yep, too far south. Let's backtrack. We don't need to deal with those enemies unless we absolutely have to. We've already had enough enemy killing in this episode. So head back to that pile. Now the other issue with these sludge trails is that they're not going to dissipate quickly unless I'm in the area. If I wander off, they're not going to be in the reality bubble so they won't dissipate. They won't, um, like I don't know how they dissipate. I guess they just evaporate over time or whatever. But um, yeah, without rain and stuff, they'll probably be here for a while. So the auto sorting thing might not work because of the sludge trail. So let's try walking on the other side of it. No, so this is not really working. Uh, but we can check on anything that's already been moved down here. What do we got? Uh, I don't know why you... Oh, because I marked for books. Okay. And then my spear obviously counts as a weapon. Oh, they did have guns on them. Okay, so this saved us quite a bit of time just from having to sort those corpses. Okay. Um, and you know what? It's nice to have a Beretta. Um, Beretta is a solid handgun uh, with the 9mm. It's not obviously not super potent damage-wise, but it's nice to have a sidearm uh, that's 9mm because 9mm is so plentiful. What do we have over here? Tools. Okay. Okay. Pretty, pretty nice. And then I guess that's it. So I guess no um, just raw ammunition, or at least that we can't get access to. So why don't we, um, you know what, I'm going to pulp these off camera. I think it's just going to be tedious and you probably don't want to watch me do that. So I'm going to pulp all these corpses and then in the next episode we will, hopefully by then some of the sludge will go away and we'll continue sorting because the fact that I can hit O and it still moves me around, what that means is that it still has things to sort. Because if it didn't have stuff to sort, when I would hit O, it would just say, finish sorting loot so obviously there's more weapons there's more stuff here for us to grab but uh, i think i'll pulp these corpses hopefully that amount of time will pass and maybe some of this sludge will go away but for now everyone thank you for watching again sorry for the audio in the previous episode and my game just crashed as i was quick saving my game crashed so if i have to do that all again i'm going to lose my mind internet we'll deal with this in the next episode for now thank you for watching sorry what a horrible okay I'll be back with more in the near future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.